Transcendental Diary travels with His Divine, Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, August 1976 to October 1976. So we continue. But Prabhupada disagreed. He said that Srila Bhaktisiddhanta condemned the idea of sitting down and chanting in one place as merely a cheating process adopted by unscrupulous people desirous of obtaining name and fame as a so-called advanced devotee. He added that the idea that Krishna will automatically give prema is karma mimamsa philosophy. Krishna is not obliged to give prema to anyone, he said, no matter how many rounds they chant. Incredibly, at the end of Nitai's letter, he had the audacity and hypocrisy to tell Prabhupada that he was now going out to seek the shelter of some great Mahatma in whom I can place greater faith. And he asked for his blessings so that I may advance more and more. Srila Prabhupada's response was very strong. Yes, I bless you that you shall never advance. <laughs> he then dictated a telegram to be sent to all the GBCs. Please let it be known that Nitai has become a venomous serpent. Be careful of him. 
your ever well wisher ac bhakti vedanta swami so i think this devotee nitai he had written a letter to propad saying um he doubted few things right prabhu you were reading yesterday so he was um few things and you just wanted to sit and chant and here um propad condemned the idea pakistan the sarasa thakur wrote a book called vaishnava ke and there he says dushta mana tumi kisera vaishnava pratistara tare nijane radhare tava hari nama kevala kaitava meaning oh oh vaishnava what kind of a devotee are you desiring um name and fame you just want to sit in a um secluded place and chant so this is a uh, a very he- heavy instruction heavy book also so uh, especially for those if what kind of devotee are you vaishnava ke so um i think in uh, in this case um, propad he is teaching us to be careful of taking cheaply taking uh, krishna consciousness cheaply so that is called sahajiya in a way sahajiya means you make everything very cheap so it's nice instruction so we go to chaitanya charitamrita जय जय श्री चैतन्य जय नित्यानंद जय द्वैत चंद्र जय गौर भक्त वृंद जय जय श्री चैतन्य जय नित्यानंद जय द्वैत चंद्र जय गौर भक्त वृंद जय जय श्री चैतन्य जय नित्यानंद जय द्वैत चंद्र जय गौर भक्त वृंद रीडिंग फ्रॉम श्री चैतन्य चरितामृता मध्य लीला चैप्टर सिक्स टेक्स्ट वन liberation of sarvabhauma bhattacharya six one okay naumitam gaura chandram ya naumitam gaura chandram ya kutar ka kar भक्ति आचरत नौमी तम गौरचंद्रम कुतर्क कर्कशाशय सर्वभम सर्वूम भक्ति भूमचरत नौमी तम गौरचंद्रम कुतर्क कर्कशाशय भक्तिभूम भक्तिभूमचरत चंद्रम्या 
For my respectful obeisances, tam unto him, Gaurachandram, who is known as Lord Gaurachandra, ya, who, kutarka, by bad arguments, karkasha, ashayam, whose heart was hard. Sarvabhaumam Sarvabhauma Bhattacharya Sarvabhuma The Lord of everything Bhakti Bhumanam Into a great personality of devotion Acharat Converted Translation of Srila Prabhupada I offer my respectful obeisances unto Lord Gaurachandra, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, who converted the hard-hearted Sarvabhama Bhattacharya, the reservoir of all bad logic, <laughs> into a great devotee. I'll keep reading until there is a purport. Text 2. Jaya Jaya Gaurachandra, Jaya Nityananda, Jaya Dvaita, Jaya Gaura. Jaya Dvaita Chandra, Jaya Gaura Bhakta Vrinda. All glories to Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. All glories to Lord Nityananda Prabhu. All glories to Advaita Acharya and all glories to the devotees of Lord Chaitanya. Text 3. In ecstasy, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu went from Atharal Nala to the temple of Jagannath. After seeing Lord Jagannath, he became very restless due to love of Godhead. Text 4. Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu went swiftly to embrace Lord Jagannath. But when he entered the temple, he was so overwhelmed with love of Godhead that he fainted on the floor. When Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu fell down, Sarvabhama Bhattacharya happened to see him. When the watchman threatened to beat the Lord, Sarvabhama Bhattacharya immediately forbade him. Sarvabhama Bhattacharya was very surprised to see the personal beauty of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu as well as the transcendental transformations wrought on his body due to love of Godhead. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu remained unconscious for a long time. Meanwhile, the time for offering prasad to Lord Jagannath came and the Bhattacharya tried to think of a remedy. Text 8. While Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was unconscious. Sarvabhama Bhattacharya, with the help of the watchman and some disciples, carried him to his home and laid him down in a very sanctified room. Purport. At that time, Sarvabhama Bhattacharya lived on the southern side of Jagannath temple 
His home was practical on the beach and was known as Markandeya Sarastata. At present, it is used as the monastery of Ganga Mata. Omagyana Timirandasya Gyananjana Salakaya Chakshurun Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Sri Chaitanya Mano Bhistam Sapita Mena Bhutale Soyam Rupa Gadamai Ham Dadati Swapadantikam Vandeham Shri Guru Shri Uta Padakamalam Shri Guru and Vaishnavam Sacha Sri Rupam Sagrajatam Sahagana Raghunatham Vitam Tam Sajivam Sadvaitam Savadbhutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Sri Radha Krishna Padan Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishakhan Vitamscha E Krishna Karuna Sindhu Dina Bandhu Jagatpate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namastute Tapta Kanchana Gaurangi Radhe Vrindavaneshwari Vrishabhanu Sute Devi Pranamami Hari Priye Vanchakalpa Taruvyascha Kripa Sindhu Vaevacha Patitanam Pavanebhyo Vaishnavebhyo Namo Namaha Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Sri Vasadi Gaura Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare So Sarvabhama Bhattacharya, he was in charge of the Jagannath temple at that time. And the first verse starts very nicely by saying that he was, he was expert in um, good logic. So, and because of that, his heart was very hard. There, there is um, one of the principles... Uh, Rupa Goswami writes in the Nectar of Devotion is, you should not read too many books. <laughs> because when you think you have a lot of knowledge, you become proud, your heart becomes very hard. So we can see this manifested in, in logicians and philosophers that uh, they... they they understand, somehow it seems that they understand everything, but at the end of the day, they can't come to, con, come to the right con conclusion. So, Sarvabhama Bhattacharya, he followed the, the Brahmavad or Mayavad school at, the, at this point. And uh, Srila Prabhupada, he says about how they are using word jugglery to, to distort the meaning. So, um, sometimes it can manifest in, in our discussions also that we focus too much on the literal meaning and we forget the essence. I, I was thinking of this because if we just take the literal meaning of the sastras but forget the essence, then uh, we just um, see the controversial things and then we start arguments based on those controversial things, even with devotees, you know. But the essence, if we forget the essence, then um, that, that sort of mentality can be manifested. So sometimes I also feel, maybe uh, sometimes you also feel this when you think you know too much, your heart becomes hard. It does not uh, have compassion or the respect or the humility that's needed. Uh, so uh, we can always be careful of, uh, of this point. It's not just for my is that their heart can be hard uh, when we don't become careful we can also have this to some extent so Sarvabhama Bhattacharya he is um, there in the temple and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu he comes running he is overwhelmed with 
love of God and he faints. And yeah, so until this point, uh, um, Sarvabhauma Bhattacharya carries him to his house. So Prabhupada writes here that he lives nearby. And I'll just read few, two other verses and there is a long purport. So text 9. Examining the body of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Sarvabhauma saw that his abdomen was not moving and that he was not breathing. Seeing his condition, the Bhattacharya became very anxious. So there are many symptoms that manifest when one is in love of God. And uh, it's described in the Nectar of Devotion, so many of those symptoms. Um, like in, in this case, sometimes it is said, uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's body would be so loose that the, the bones would not stick together from, you know, so it would only be um, joined together by the muscles, but the bones would already be off, you know, so his, it would be like such a long body. So all these symptoms and this symptoms of not breathing and the abdomen not moving, it is also one of the symptoms of ecstatic symptoms. So, but yeah, it says, uh, text 10, the Bhattacharya then took a fine cotton swab and put it before Lord's nostril. When he saw the cotton move very slightly, he became hopeful. So, but the Bhattacharya, he knew the symptoms of ecstatic love. He knew the sastras. So he could find, he could, he could know that this was not ordinary person. So, it, it's nice because we can know the symptoms of someone great. It is also said, uh, someone great can be known by different bodily features also. Like Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he had very long limbs and forehead was very broad. So all these symptoms were there. So a learned person can recognize someone by that also. So he uh, put a very fine cotton swab. So although the breathing was not there and the abdomen was not moving, the Bhattacharya was a sci scientist in a sense, you know. So he could see that the person was actually alive because a cotton swab, it's very fine. And even a little bit of air, you can know if a person is breathing or not. Maybe the hand would not feel, but the cotton would be able to sense this. So we can see he is very um, knowledgeable about, about, uh, about these things. Text 11. Sitting beside Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he thought, This is a transcendental ecstatic transformation brought about by love of Krishna. So he could understand. Text 12. Upon seeing the sign of Suddhipta Sattvika, Sarvabhama Bhattacharya could immediately understand the transcendental ecstatic transformation in the body of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Such a sign takes place only in the bodies of eternally liberated devotees. Purport. The word Suddhipta Sattvika is explained as follows by Śrīla Bhakti Siddhānta Sarsati Thakur. The Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu men mentions eight kinds of transcendental transformations in the bodies of advanced devotees. These are sometimes checked by the devotee and there are two stages of such checking, technically known as Dhumatiya and Jwalita. The Dhumatiya smoking stage is exhibited when only one or two transformations are slightly present and it is possible to conceal them. When more than two or three transcendental transformations are manifest, it is still possible to conceal them. Although the, with great difficulty, that state is called Jwalita, lighted. When four or five symptoms are exhibited, the Dipta, blazing stage has been reached. When five, six or all eight symptoms are simultaneously manifest, that position is called Uddhipta, inflamed. And when all eight symptoms are multiplied a thousand times and are visible at once, 
the devotee is in the suddhipta intensely inflamed stage nitya siddha bhakta indicates the eternally liberated associates of the lord such devotees enjoy the company of the lord in four relationships as servant friend parent or conjugal lover so these are the symptoms of um transcendental transformations of very advanced devotees um so shila prabhupad he he does uh, say that a devotee he does not want to exhibit these symptoms i mean he does not want to show this once when he was in mayapur he was talking about how his movement will expand he was saying um all of you are thousand devotees and each of you you take 10 disciples and then that 10 will take other 10 and then it will multiply 1000 10000 100000 <laughs> he was just um in mayapur and he was explaining how the movement will expand so he was just thinking 10000 100000 and he was so overwhelmed with ecstasy he couldn't speak and uh, he couldn't speak and then all the devotees could feel this he was in ecstasy and uh, i think it was hamsaduta or harikesh swami at the back he started chanting and then prabhupad came back to his uh, external senses and then the devo- some the, and the devotees they had two different opinions some were saying he should not have chanted and the others were saying no this was the right thing to do he sh- uh, there was nothing else to do prabhupad was in ecstasy so the devotees they went to prabhupad and they asked him so when this happens what should we do <laughs> and prabhupad was a little ashamed Uh, a little shy he said uh, this does not happen so much but yeah chanting is always nice he said so uh, propad he was of the highest caliber of advanced devotee but he did not show these uh, symptoms very often in a way also to teach us that uh, because sometimes these like this can be also manifested by the sahajiyas who cheaply try to show that oh we are advanced devotees and the um the way you can see an advanced devotee is not i mean not necessarily by if they are showing ecstatic symptoms or not he taught that when you follow his direct instructions that is uh, ecstasy um shruti kirti prabhu he explains uh, he has a memory that when he arrived in when propad arrived in la once um shruti kirti prabhu was at the back and the devotees were all chanting and dancing you know they were so ecstatic some of them were crying some of them were mad you know so and uh, so they go back to the temple and shruti kirti prabhu he goes to propad and then he says shala propad i don't cry for you like those devotees are crying i don't have that love and propad he said he wanted to of course he he was not uh, saying negatively about the devotees but he was saying anybody can cry you know anybody can um make have some emotions but you are serving me that's the most important thing so so he wanted of course he wanted to highlight that service is more important and the symptoms uh, the ecstasy they may come they may not come that is not the most important thing um so that's very i think that's a uh, nice instruction yeah so this is a 
all the symptoms are explained here but i'll read one more verse text 13 sarvabhauma bhattacharya con considered the uncommon ecstatic symptoms of aniruddha bhav are appearing in the body of shri chaitanya mahaprabhu this is very wonderful how are they possible in the body of a human being purport aniruddha bhav or aniruddha mahabhav is explained in ujjwala nilamani by Srila Rupa Goswami. Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur quotes Rupa Goswami as follows. The loving propensity of the Ashraya devotee toward the Vishaya Lord becomes so ecstatic that even after enjoying the company of the beloved, the devotee feels that his enjoyment is insufficient. At such a time, the lover sees the beloved in different ways. Such a development of ecstasy is called Anurag. When anurag reaches its highest limit and becomes perceivable in the body, it's called bhava. When the bodily symptoms are not very distinct, however, the emotional state is called anurag, not bhava. When bhava ecstasy is intensified, it is called mahabhava. The symptoms of mahabhava are visible only in the bodies of eternal associates like the gopis. So I think these symptoms are all mentioned in Nectar of Devotion also. And Chaitanya Charitamrit is so is such a high grade um, Prabhupada would say Bhagavad Gita is like bachelors, Bhagavatam is like masters, and then you move on to Chaitanya Charitamrit, which is like the PhD. So it's it's very special. Actually Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasa Thakur he recommends that all the devotees should uh, read Chaitanya Charitamrita the first thing, you know, because it is one of the it is one of the unique things that is only for us Gaudiya Vaishnavas, because the Shrimad Bhagavatam is there in other sampradaya also, but it's a unique uh, treasure for the Gaudiya Vaishnavas. It explains all these uh, philosophical concepts and very uh, intimate pastimes and so it's very rel uh, relishable for, for the Gaudiya Vaishnavas and Chaitanya Charitamrit is uh, when Srila Prabhupada he was in Jaladuta he, he wrote the poem that he didn't have um, much to do he, was, he only had Chaitanya Charitamrit and he was always reading Chaitanya Charitamrit so it's a very special and all these um, we can just go on and it, it's very uh, full of full of nectar and today is also I think we can discuss um, Vamana Duadasi um, uh, the, the appearance of Lord Vamana Dev Srila Prabhupada he did want on the at least on the day of uh, the appearance he wanted devotees to discuss about um, the that particular um, incarnation, and especially when uh, things like Ram Navami and Bhamana Duadasi, Narsingha Chaturdasi, we focus on these. Yeah, at least that one day of the year, we focus on their pastimes because other days <laughs> we are not remembering them much. Uh, we don't remember much about Bhamana. Um, Lord Vamandev on other days, but Lord Vamandev, he was the uh, dwarf incarnation. Um, so he came to ask uh, three steps of land from Bali Maharaj. Bali Maharaj, he was born in a demoniac family. And uh, so uh, he, he was a great king and he had conquered all the three worlds. Because he was, um, I think at that point, the uh, demigods, they were not following the instructions of their guru properly. So they were losing uh, the, the planets. So Bali Maharaj, he comes to uh, take these, uh, these, what he had taken from the demigods and give it back to the demigods. So, yeah, Bali Maharaj, he had conquered everything. Vamandev, he came dressed as a Brahmana. So he was a nice, cute boy, you know. So very, Bali Maharaj was attracted. 
but uh, bali maharaj had a guru sukracharya and sukracharya was he knew th- this is vishnu and uh, he he said don't don't surrender on to him he'll take everything from you and at that point um bali maharaj he rejects his guru if if it's vishnu then i should surrender on to him prabhupad he says that bali maharaj is one of the mahajans and um he said in one of the lecture that uh, bali maharaj is a mahajan because he rejected his guru <laughs> so it's also instructive that uh, if the guru is not telling you to surrender to krishna then we can even reject that guru that is according to the shastras so so he ask for three steps of land vamandev he asks for three steps of land and uh, bali maharaj says why just three ask more i am i am the king <laughs> i have everything and there is a very nice statement in the bhagavatam that uh, vamandev says he says if you cannot be satisfied with a little you cannot be satisfied with a lot that is a very nice statement i think if a s- little bit of thing cannot satisfy you a lot of that very thing also won't satisfy you because the senses are never satisfied so he says okay and then three steps one he covers the upper planetary system second step he covers the lower planetary system and then third step there is no nothing left so bari maharaj he surrenders unto him and said you keep your third step on my head so bali maharaj he is example of surrender in our line how to surrender everything the three steps is very nice when uh, the devotee is um, when the devotees they wanted to get the rath yatra permit in in new york they went to the office and they uh, they said we want a permit for for um for for the cart and the official said how big is the cart and uh, the devotee said it's just three hand pull carts <laughs> it's not very big just three hand pull so how big can a hand pull cart be it's like maybe this big <laughs> and they gave the permit and devotees came to prabhupad and they said we said three hand pull carts and prabhupad said yeah this is in our line <laughs> Bali Maharaj did the same thing the three small steps but uh, big with the small thing you can do big thing small steps so actually that is instructive because proper he said in many cases he said um if they knew me what i was going to present when i came to america they would kill me <laughs> you know so he gave the example in like a needle out like a plow you go in very small when you when you preach it's also a nice instruction to preach also when you are telling someone to take books or telling someone of our philosophy you go in like a needle you know very small it's not a big thing just chant one round it takes 10 minutes of your day <laughs> maybe 5 minutes you know but it takes uh, at the end of the day they are engaged in devotional service for 24 hours so so in like a plow uh, in like a needle out like a plow uh, it's instructive um in case of bali maharaj also we can start small 
and then grow big and that is also i i thought that is also um instructive when we ask people to come to the temple we start small according to what they can accept we don't throw the whole <laughs> philosophy at them we start small at what they can accept and slowly increase so that's a nice uh, instructive uh, can be connected in many ways and today is also appearance of jiva goswami uh, yeah ah, okay so jiva goswami was one of the six goswamis also and he was junior to all of all the goswamis maybe some of you also can add uh, i don't i have not researched much but um he didn't have much association of chaitanya mahaprabhu he was still young when uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was meeting Rupa Goswami and Sanatan Goswami. Um, but he is one of the Goswamis who wrote the most, actually. Who wrote the most number of books. And he is even compared to Vyasadev in because he had the same number of writing as, as uh, Vyasadev. And he was very expert in many, many things. He was... Uh, Rupa Goswami and Sanatan Goswami, they were giving uh, like so many of practical things to do to Jiva Goswami, like, like editing, proofreading and uh, things like dealing with the government at that time, you know, dealing with the Muslims. So Jiva Goswami was handling all these, uh, all these practical things. And we have a, a devotee, his name is Radhika Raman Prabhu, in, uh, is in the U.S. He, he did his Ph.D. on Jiva Goswami Sat Sandarbha. Yeah. So, um, he's a scholar, very nice scholar in ISKCON. And uh, he also is like one of the biggest authority on Jiva Goswami. And when he was reading... Jiva Goswami's um, uh, all the teachings and every all the uh, things he said, he found it very similar to Srila Prabhupada. The personality of Jiva Goswami was very similar to the personality of Prabhupada. Prabhupada wrote so much, but he was at the same time a very practical, you know, establishing institutions. So Jiva Goswami was doing something very similar. He was establishing uh, institution he was print also circulating the books he had he was organizing preaching works he had three disciples um, Narottam Das Thakur Shyamananda and Srinivas so he sent manuscripts uh, to different places to preach you know and they were stolen there is a nice story how the manuscripts were stolen uh, uh, some some guys thought they were so protective those days they didn't have much books they would all copy um, so all the books uh, the nectar of uh, devotion all the books by the Goswamis so Jiva Goswami had cop made a copy and then he sent with uh, Narottam Das Thakur Srinivas and Shyamananda too and they had guards you know to guard these books they were so precious because they didn't have much so there were guards and the, they were passing one, one, one kingdom and the, the king, I think the king thought it was very <coughs> precious. Some astrologer told him that there is something very precious in this book. And then... I lost the line. So the books, he sent these books with his disciples. Jiva Goswami sent these books with his disciples to preach, to different, to to preach in different places. Like for example, he sent um, Narottam Das Thakur to to Manipur, and actually Narottam Das Thakur converted the whole kingdom of Manipur to Vaishnavism, and still we find that that Vaishnav. Vaishnav teachings still we can find and uh, like for example Bhaktiswarup Dhamadar Maharaj he was from Manipur and he took so many of these uh, 
um, of of uh, of the of the Manipur style Vaishnavism. He he showed it later also. So anyway, so he was basically I I wanted to say he was organizing these things. There is a nice uh, pastime that one one digvijay meaning one debate debater or uh, someone who wanted to establish himself as as a very big how do you say this debate um he is the highest authority yeah 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 yeah, yeah exactly yeah. so he wanted to establish himself as Digvijay Pandit and then he comes to Vrindavan he knows that Rupa Goswami and Sanatan are a very learned scholars so he also wants to defeat them but then Rupa Goswami and Sanatan Goswami they are so busy they don't want to fight they don't want to argue so they just sign you are the most <laughs> you are the greatest of all and uh, Jiva Goswami he sees um, that their his spiritual master he he had this burning desire to conquer him by by and and say that no you are not the greatest uh, my my spiritual masters they are better i mean he didn't want to uh, give up so easily he wanted to glorify his spiritual masters basically so he goes to this Div, Div Vijay pandit he argues with him and then he defeats him and somehow um who comes to know about this rupa goswami comes to know about this and then he he chastises jiva goswami how can you be so proud you are not fit to live here you get out and so he goes out of vrindavan he uh, builds a small space somewhere out of vrindavan and he starts living there but sanatan goswami he comes and then he uh chastises rupa goswami and says you are supposed to we are supposed to have jiva daya where is your jiva daya <laughs> jiva daya vaishnava ruchi nama seva so where is your jiva daya so call him back so then he calls him back so jiva goswami was the younger one and uh, in this way he was uh, he also has he wrote um he had what is the main temple of jiva goswami in vrindavan i'm not sure but there is one of one of his deities i forgot <laughs> so yeah any additions on jiva goswami vamana dwadasi or sarvabhama bhattacharya Or questions? Mm. 
think you know best than me. <laughs> uh, I think when we at least uh, we we read, but according to uh, Srila Prabhupada, what he recommended. Uh, so he basically recommended Bhagavatam, Chaitanya Charitamrita, and all the small books also. Of course, I think the basic thing is um, we don't want to become proud of our knowledge. How to have a soft heart Uh, yeah, what I can think of is <clears throat> one thing that makes the heart heart soft is also trying to share, trying to give it to others also. Because then we realize how difficult it is to become a devotee. <laughs> and... Uh, that's what I have experienced. When, when I try to share with, with others, I become more humble because not everyone will accept and someone will say something that you don't like. Um, Kadamba Kanan Maharaj, he says, he gives this example that when a river, a pond is not flowing, after some time, it becomes, starts stinking and starts growing so many weeds, so many weeds starts growing there. So he said, bhakti is also like that. If it's not flowing, it becomes stagnant and it becomes not, not very desirable. So that's, that's what comes to my mind. <laughs> Anything else, Prabhu, or would you like to add? <laughs> Mataji, yeah. Could you help translate? Uh, it's through many body, through mm. serving in our mm. uh, our Yeah. Yeah, that's what uh, the Goswamis gave. Jiva Daya, Vaishnava Seva, Nama Ruchi. Three things. We need to focus. So Shri Chaitanya Charitamrita ki jai, Shri Jiva Goswami ki jai, Vamana Duadasi ki jai, Shri Prabhupada ki jai.